Hi, prepare yourself. You are about to enter the world of navigation in three dimensions. Of course, we're all pretty familiar with 3D because we live in a 3D world. But in a 2D medium like your computer screen, recreating 3D has been a historical challenge. Since the earliest days of 3D animation and development, various strategies for representing objects in 3D were used. Interestingly, the earliest technologies were tactile. Sensors were used on physical objects and then tracked to 3D space in the computer, a technique that has made a huge return in the form of motion capture and virtual reality. But for the vast majority of us, creating convincing 3D stuff is simply a matter of learning to navigate the 3D viewport with keyboard and mouse. It's surprisingly easy to do with a little practice, and even with the aid of virtual or augmented reality, nothing can quite match the versatility of the mouse, as seen in a recent HoloLens prototype video. So come with me on a magical 3D journey into... Yeah, I'm trying too hard. I get it. Let's begin. As always, let's take a second to review the previous topic. In the last topic, you learned the pieces of the user interface, various ways to modify the layout, and how to save files every which way. The most important hotkeys covered were Alt F11 for layout full screen, Shift spacebar for single editor full screen, and Shift left click and drag to open a new window. Also remember that F2 to save as, numpad plus to increment your file, and enter to confirm is a great way of saving files effectively. Understanding the UI enables a level of personalization that affects your efficiency, and the ways Blender saves your content is a must know. Our current topic is all about navigation in 3D space. We'll begin by talking about the coordinate system used in 3D. We'll move on to the particulars of viewing objects in the 3D view editor, and finish with a look at viewport shading options. By the end of this topic, you'll feel pretty confident with controlling the 3D view editor and seeing a given object exactly as you want. So with that, we are ready to take the plunge. Our first part is called the coordinate system. First things first, let's learn about the axes of our 3D world. The axes act as reference lines for the measurement of coordinates. To explain, we begin in a world with zero dimensions. It's dull, boring, not even flat, it's just nothing. Enter the first dimension, which you could describe as going left to right. It's known as the x-axis, and in Blender, the x-axis is portrayed as a red line. Still boring though, so second dimension, come forth! You shall go front to back, and I shall call you the y-axis. In Blender, the y-axis is green. Finally, emerge, third dimension. You are down and up, the z-axis. The z-axis is blue in Blender. What we now have is a three-dimensional world, and if we consider each axis to be like a ruler, we now have a way to identify the position of anything in our world numerically. Like that. Oh, see that? That's a point in 3D space. Because we have our axes, we can plot a numerical value for it along the x, y, and z, and these values combine to give us a precise location of this floaty, uh, thing. The shapes you see inside Blender are really just connected collections of these points in space. But when we talk about the visible pieces of the objects you see in Blender, we're really talking about the elements of the mesh. Among others, these consist of vertices, edges, and faces. It starts with the individual points, which when it comes to meshes we call vertices, or in singular form, a vertex. Vertices are the basis of all meshes. You can't have a mesh without vertices, at least not a useful one. By forming lines between the vertices, we make a wireframe. Blender calls the lines between vertices, edges. And if we fill in the edges, we can portray a surface. These surfaces, Blender calls, faces. Finally, if we combine faces together, we get a fully 3D shape, which has volume and a sense of depth. And note that each element of this mesh has a numerical position, or coordinates, in our 3D world. 
Moving now into Blender proper. In the main region of the 3D view, you can see the X, Y, and Z axes represented as lines that intersect. You can also see the grid. The grid is a kind of visual reference for the coordinates of your objects and mesh elements. It displays the area where the X and Y axes meet, and each line on the grid represents one unit of distance. The grid is often treated as the floor of the world. Looking at the cube, for example, its origin, the point where it was created, is in the exact middle of the grid. It's that tiny orange dot. And if you plotted its location numerically, it would have the coordinates x0, y0, and z0. But what about the individual vertices of the cube? Well, to see them, I'll enter edit mode now from the object interaction menu of the 3D view header and move around a bit, but you're not meant to learn how to do this just yet, so don't worry about how I'm doing it. The cube, as you can see, has eight vertices. Let's plot the coordinates of the closest one using the grid as a reference. From our current viewpoint, moving left of the intersecting point of the axes will give a negative value. Same for moving back on the y-axis or down on the z-axis. So this vertex would have a value of x1, y negative 1, and although the grid doesn't follow the z-axis, you could guess it has a value of z1, and you'd be right. So in summary, the grid's role here is as a visual reference for the coordinates of your elements and objects in Blender. It does have other functions as well, but we'll discuss those later. Another thing you need to understand is that what we've been discussing is referred to as the global coordinate system. The X, Y, and Z locations of elements in relation to our world. But there is also a local coordinate system. The X, Y, and Z locations of elements in relation to their object origin. I'll explain. If you consider this car object, for example, it has its own sense of left and right, front and back, top and bottom, or X, Y, and Z, which are displayed by this widget, which is used to move the object along the axes. You can see that the widget is centered on the object origin point. Again, this is the point where the object was created. Right now, the widget axes align exactly to the world X, Y, and Z. But if the car is rotated, I'm unhappy that my widget is still aligned to the global axes because now the car doesn't move properly when I drag on the y-axis. I want the widget to follow the direction of the car so that I can move it more easily. I want there to be a separation between the axes of my world and the axes of my object. And luckily there is. Every object in Blender has its own local axes. By changing the transform orientation to local from the dropdown in the header, my widget displays these local axes. So now I can follow the new direction with ease. But how does this all work? What's really happening here? Well, the key is that mesh elements are not actually positioned using global coordinates, but local coordinates. These coordinates consider the object origin as the x0, y0, z0, regardless of where they are in the world. So even if I move my cube far outside the grid, the position of my vertex locally is still x1, y-1, z1, because it is one unit to the right of the origin, one unit back of the origin, and one unit up from the origin. When you move an object as a whole from object mode, what you're really doing is moving the object origin. The vertices are placed relative to this origin, so they move with it, but their local coordinates do not change even if the object origin is rotated or what have you. This distinction between global and local is very important to using Blender properly, but if you don't quite get it yet, that's okay. I'll be coming back to it when it really matters later on. Okay, you've learned some pretty important concepts, so I've got a simple challenge for you. Answer the following questions about the coordinate system. Now, if you can, speak audibly. It's a proven method to help you more easily remember information. Each answer will display 10 seconds after the question is read. What are the names of the three axes by color? What are the x, y, z coordinates of this vertex? What is the difference between these widgets? A 
bonus question, which editor is this? Another bonus, which hotkey makes an editor full screen? If you didn't get all the questions right, have no fear. This is something you'll learn naturally while using Blender. So let's move on for now.